Hello and welcome to the Striker Balance podcast for working homeschool moms. This is Charlotte Jones. I'm a homeschool coach and homeschooling mom of twin boys. I know it can feel really overwhelming to keep all the balls in the air all the time. So each week I chat about tips and strategies for being a happy and thriving working homeschool mom that you can implement in your life too. I also speak to awesome and inspiring women who manage to juggle homeschooling and work successfully and find out what their secrets are. Be sure to check out my time audit and mindset challenge in the show notes and sign up to my newsletter for lots of cool freebies. And if you ever need to chat, please book in a session with me. I'm so excited for you to be here and I hope you'll get so much value out of this episode. So let's get started. Are you looking for a new math curriculum? Well, I'm thrilled to introduce our favorite math curriculum to you. CTC Math specializes in providing online video tutorials that take a multi-sensory approach to learning. Favorably reviewed in Kathy Duffy's 102 Top Picks and the Old Schoolhouse Crew Review, the lessons are short and concise to help your children break down concepts and appreciate math in a whole new way. The lessons are taught the traditional way and not to a test. Each one of the video tutorials is taught by an internationally acclaimed teacher, Pat Murray, who is renowned for teaching math concepts in a simple, easy to understand way and in only a few minutes at a time. Using a multi-sensory approach means having the combination of effective graphics and animation synchronized with the voice of a friendly teacher together with a practical assessment. This three-pronged attack makes learning so much easier and more effective. Even students who struggled with math are getting fantastic results, and ones who were doing okay before are now doing brilliantly. Visit ctcmath.com today to start your free trial. CTC Maths is generously offering my listeners an amazing special. Go to www.ctcmath.com forward slash MLH to get a half price discount plus a bonus six months for free. That's C-T-C-M-A-T-H dot C-O-M forward slash M-L-H. Well, hello there. I'm so pleased you're here. Uh, this is episode 37 of the Strike a Balance podcast for working homeschool moms. And today I'm talking about homeschooling your neurodivergent children. So this is a topic that is obviously close to my heart. I have neurodivergent twins who I've been homeschooling for more than five years. And just a disclaimer, obviously I'm not an expert, I'm not trained, but this advice and these strategies are entirely based on my personal experiences. So neurodiversity obviously falls on such a wide spectrum that there can't really be a step-by-step guide to homeschooling your neurodivergent child in the correct way. I'm putting correct in air quotes, obviously. But what I can share are some things that I think that all of us parents need to do to homeschool our kids in a positive way. Okay, so the first thing that I needed to go through and maybe you need to go through is the grieving process before you start homeschooling. So I'm not sure how you felt when you got the diagnosis of your child's neurodiversity. I was devastated, to be honest. I have to be honest. When our children were diagnosed with being on the autism spectrum, and I was really afraid for them and what their lives would be like, because I guess the term really conjured up such negative thoughts and emotions. And this was based almost entirely on what I'd seen in the media and how people spoke about it. So think this is obviously maybe six, seven or eight years ago. Obviously, a lot has changed since then, thankfully. But I also grieved for the loss of how I thought my life would be. I think many many parents have dreams and aspirations for their kids. I think it's normal that are based on what they desire as parents. And children often don't even have these choices themselves. But going through the grieving process was really important. And once I came out on the other side, I was ready to advocate for my kids. But I needed that time to process and to grieve so that I could offer my kids the best homeschool possible. I just quickly wanted to walk you through the grieving process as well. I know the five stages of grief are kind of frowned upon now, but I think it really really spoke to me because I definitely felt these different stages that I'd gone through. So obviously denial. We actually took our kids out of school. We put them in another school when we, when the first teacher mentioned that they might need a, an assessment. But then when we, I think when we went to the second or the second or the third teacher told us that they think that they need an assessment, I think we could not deny it anymore. And then obviously the next stage is very much anger. 
And this was kind of directed at the world around us. We live in a country where, unfortunately, there are not a lot of services readily available for kids, neurodivergent kids. For example, therapists are extremely exorbitant. There are no state runs, well, where we live anyway, there are no state run kind of facilities where we can get help. And also, I think maybe the society and some, even at the beginning, friends and family, it made me really angry the way that they reacted to how the kids were behaving. They were not really informed about what, what it meant to be autistic and how that kind of manifested. The next stage was kind of, as they called the bargaining stage. And here, this is a stage where I felt a lot of guilt because I think as a parent of a neurodivergent child, you often blame yourself. What did I do? You know, did I do something in pregnancy? Was there something before? Was it my fault? Could I have done something differently? Things like that. And I do still feel guilt. Luckily, that is quite processed, you know, well processed now, but still it's definitely something that does crop up now and again. And then depression follows that naturally. I mean, I'm generally somebody who can suffer from depression. So it was, uh, it was quite a long stage that I had to get through to be depressed, to feel sorry for myself. How are we going to manage it all? How are we going to pay for everything? All that kind of stuff. But luckily, I got through this stage. And the final stage is acceptance, which is obviously where we are now. And when you get to the stage of acceptance, this is where you can take positive steps in the right direction. But I would say that you do need to go through all these phases just so that you can process everything because it is a lot that you need to process. And I think it's important to take that time to process it properly before you maybe start homeschooling. Because homeschooling, let me tell you, is a lot about how you are as a parent. Very much a lot, a lot about how you are as a parent. As I said, I would suggest giving yourself as much time as you need because mindset is one of the biggest elements of the whole homeschooling process. And you need to be open. You need to be willing to learn and ready to give your kids exactly what they need. So the next step is something that I sound like a broken record about, but something I believe very strongly in, and that's de-schooling. But yourself as a parent. I'm a huge believer in the power of de-schooling, especially if your child is neurodivergent. You're going to have the most success if you throw everything you think about edu what education should be out of the window. Um, your kid is going to need a tailor-made learning experience that suits them and their needs in whatever way that comes. And it might be different to what you think learning should be. And I think that can sometimes be hard to accept. And once you open your eyes to all the different types of learning, you're going to be blown away by what you can offer your kids. What they get taught at public school cannot hold a candle to what you can offer them at home or in homeschooling. There are just so many fantastic resources out there, so many great programs and curricula and oh, so many fantastic things that can engage them in the way that they like to learn or that they respond to the best. Another fantastic thing about de-schooling is it gives you the chance to kind of really become flexible. Um, because flexibility is incredibly important because this is this is how you're going to be able to craft a homeschool that will encourage your kids to love learning because it's going to be on their terms entirely. And finally, by releasing any need to measure your kids against others, you're going to be able to work to their strengths or to the strengths of your kids, whatever they may be. So that is another important aspect of de-schooling is to kind of get rid of all those school elements like inflexibility, standardization, things like that. And then you can really start to craft a homeschool experience that's going to work for your child. Something else that's super important about homeschooling or neurodivergent child might sound obvious, but that is you need kindness, 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 kindness. So obviously as parents, we want the very best for our kids naturally, but it's very easy to let things like expectations from society and family creep into how we deal with them. So I know that I would, for example, get frustrated with my kids at times when they were misbehaving, air quotes, or if they weren't learning a way that I expected. And I, you know, I would get annoyed. And that's why de-schooling is so important to kind of release all of this need for control. And as much as it's difficult for you, just think about how difficult it is for your child. They're navigating a world that they don't understand, perhaps, that doesn't understand them, almost surely. And... They might not be able to regulate their emotions or express how they feel. So you need to show your neurodivergent child so much kindness. So in practical terms, this looks like 
giving them as much time as they need to complete something or having oodles and oodles of patience and obviously being a true advocate for them as well and praising and rewarding them all the time and also being 100% fully and totally invested and present in the homeschooling process. At the same time, it's important not to forget to be kind to yourself. You're not going to be able to give your child what they need if you don't look after yourself. We all know this. You cannot pour from an empty cup. You need to be strict and consistent with self-care. So this means taking time for yourself. If you need a break, take a break without guilt because it's, it's important. It's really important to take, this, take that time if you need it. Obviously, eating and sleeping well, exercising, asking for help. If you can, I mean, this is not easy. Some people don't have help that they can ask for. And some people also find it really difficult to ask for help. I think asking for help can be really, really brave. And also obviously looking after your physical and mental health too, because it can be really exhausting and it can be frustrating to homeschool your neurodivergent child. So you need to be at your best and you also need to know when to walk away for a while if necessary. And something else that you know I'm a very strong believer in is homeschooling your neurodivergent child with a community. It takes a village, as they say. A community can really, really help you so very much. I don't think I would have even had the courage to homeschool our kids without my online community. They were and are so instrumental in helping me, helping me to make the decision to actually start homeschooling because I, before I didn't even know that it was possible. I didn't even know it was a thing. But luckily I found out that it was. Otherwise I wouldn't be here five more than five years down the line. And it can also feel really, really lonely at times. For example, if you're feeling like you're failing your child or your child is having an epic meltdown, it can feel really lonely and there can be guilt and shame when you lose your, lose your cool or when you lash out. It does happen. Obviously, you are human. But it's times like this that a community can be so invaluable. Um, they can tell you you're not alone. We've all done it. We've all lost our cool. I mean, it's, we're only human. You can, they can give you advice and tips for dealing with obstacles, tell you where to find resources, or even just be there to vent, because venting can also be really, really useful. Um, and it's better to obviously vent with people rather than at your child. Obviously, there are lots of groups on Facebook. You can find maybe positive people to follow on Facebook, on TikTok, on Instagram, things like that. So, f you know, find a group that speaks to you. And even start your own. That's what I did. <laughs> even start your own if you can't find something that that's exactly what you're looking for. So just a final thought. I know it's easy for me to give all this advice more than five years down the line. But I just want to say that it's hard, but it is possible. I think just by deciding that you want to give your child more or different means so much. And it's going to be hard at the beginning. Anything new is. But it will get easier. You just stick at it. Just be open, be willing to learn, you know, be willing to work on yourself, on your mindset constantly, and it will get better and you will get better. And it's inevitable if your desire is strong enough that you will achieve your goal. You can do it. I totally believe in you. And as you know, you can always, always, always reach out to me if you need some support. I really hope you enjoyed the episode. Drop me a DM on Instagram or post on the Working Homeschool Mom support group over on Facebook. And let me know what resonated the most with you. It would also be great if you could rate, review and subscribe or share the podcast with a working homeschool mom who might need it. It's my mission to support as many working homeschool moms as possible. Until next time, take care. Hello and welcome to the Striker Balance podcast for working homeschool moms. This is Charlotte Jones. I'm a homeschool coach and homeschooling mom of twin boys. I know it can feel really overwhelming to keep all the balls in the air all the time. So each week I chat about tips and strategies for being a happy and thriving working homeschool mom that you can implement in your life too. I also speak to awesome and inspiring women who manage to juggle homeschooling and work 